What's up, guys? This is Matt Singer from ScreenCrush.com, and today we're counting down the top five worst Batman movie moments of all time. He is vengeance. He is the night. He is Batman. And by and large, he is also the star of some really good comic book movies, some of the best ever made, in fact. But unlike Batman himself, Batman movies are not always perfect. And even some of the good ones have included some very questionable moments. Warm up those vocal cords and start practicing your most ridiculous Batman voice. You'll be in a better jail forever. Because we're going to count down the worst of the worst, starting with... Number 5. Alfred lets Vicky Vale into the Batcave in 1989's Batman. Towards the end of Tim Burton's otherwise pretty good 1989 Batman movie, there's a scene that has bothered me since I was a little kid. In the film, Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne tries to protect Gotham City as Batman while also falling in love with Kim Basinger's reporter, Vicki Vale. As the movie progresses, Bruce contemplates telling Vicki the truth about his double life. He even goes to her apartment to talk to her, but then they get interrupted by the Joker. Still, it seems like a pretty big breach of Butler protocol when, a few scenes later, Alfred just lets Vicky into the Batcave, effectively ruining Bruce Wayne's secret identity forever. Interestingly, the Batman screenplay has this scene set in Bruce Wayne's study and not the Batcave. And that makes a lot more sense. Even the Batman franchise later admitted this scene was horrible when Bruce openly mocked Alfred for screwing up in Batman Returns. Who let Vicky Vale into the Batcave? I'm sitting there working and I turn around, there she is. Oh, hi, Vic. Come on in. Butlers. I'm pretty sure this is like rule number one in the butler handbook. If your boss is an eccentric billionaire who dresses up like a bat to fight crime, don't tell his girlfriend about it. Next up, number four, a poodle stops a batarang in Batman Returns. Tim Burton's Batman Returns is one of the more controversial films in the Batman canon. Some love it, others hate it. I tend to love it, but I can't abide the scene where Batman squares off with the Red Triangle Gang and the world's greatest detective and fighter finally meets his match in the form of... a poodle. Yes, that's right. While Batman tussles with the Penguin's goons, he throws a cool pre-programmable batarang at a bunch of bad guys. It takes out three henchmen in short order, but when it's on a collision course for the henchwoman, her damn dog intercepts it! Okay, first of all, there is no way any dog, except Ace the Bat Hound, could catch a Batarang, much less a remote-controlled Batarang. Second of all, look at how high this Batarang is thrown. It's hitting all the bad guys right in the face. You think this tiny little poodle could jump that high? I don't think so. And I don't think the dog did either. Look at that little hop he takes. This is one big pile of bat BS. Number three, Martha from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Ben Affleck's Batman spends most of his first film appearance hunting down Henry Cavill's Superman, who he believes has too much power and must be destroyed. This is not very Batmanly behavior if you ask me, but whatever. He sets up an elaborate trap to kill Superman and he's just about to do it when Superman grunts out a very important word. You're letting him kill Martha. This causes Batman to have a full-on flashback to his childhood and the murder of his parents because both Batman and Superman's mom were named Martha. And Batman is not happy about it. Why did you say that, Dad? Ultimately, it's this. Not a fight, not a conversation about their goals, just a random coincidence that ends their movie-long disagreement. After this, Superman and Batman are total besties, teaming up to take down Doomsday. So, to recap, Superman's one weakness is kryptonite. Batman's one weakness is the name Martha. It's a good thing Alfred didn't tell Vicki Vale Bruce Wayne's mom's name was Martha. Things could have gotten really crazy. Next up, number two, the Bat Nipples from Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Batman's cape and cowl is maybe the single most essential part of his identity. It's what makes him Batman and not just a crazy rich dude who punches other crazy guys in the face. On screen, though, it hasn't always been the most practical fashion accessory. In most of the 90s Batman movies, he couldn't even turn his head in the thing, which is sort of an important function for a guy who wants to sneak up on bad guys, get into brutal fistfights, or just turn around like a normal human being. 
Batman would eventually gain some neck mobility, but he didn't exactly make it a priority. Before he gave himself an articulated neck, he gave himself articulated nipples. Criminals are a superstitious, cowardly lot, so my disguise must be able to strike terror into their hearts. I must be a creature of the night. Black, terrible, no neck movements. Oh, and also slightly protruding nipples. There is nothing scarier than a monster with nipples that can't turn its neck. Now it's time for the number one worst Batman movie moment. It's Batman's fast food commercial from Batman Forever. First of all, I don't care what you say, the Bat Shark repellent from 1966's Batman movie is not terrible, it's great. Batman is the smartest guy on the planet and he would be prepared for any situation, including one where he'd need to repel a shark. Batman is also really good at branding, which is very important in this modern world, so Bat Shark repellent just makes sense. This is a good moment and you'll never convince me otherwise. Here's something a whole lot worse than that. The very first scene from Batman Forever. Now, keep in mind, Batman Forever was the first movie with a brand new Batman played by Val Kilmer and a brand new director, Joel Schumacher. A lot was riding on this new creative team and whether they'd be able to live up to Tim Burton and Michael Keaton. You only get one chance to make a good first impression and here's how they did it. Persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through. <sighs> Where to begin? Number one, I don't know that Batman is the kind of dude who makes jokes about going to get fast food when he should be out stopping crime. Meet the new Batman, same as the old Batman, except he loves Big Macs and has nipples on his costume. Also, this whole thing just makes Batman sound like a pitchman for McDonald's, which is what he became when this exact moment showed up in commercials for McDonald's. I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir. I'll get drive through Introducing McDonald's Superhero Burger. I mean, I guess the junk food explains the suit with the fake muscles built in. But Bruce Wayne is the last guy who'd be doing commercials for fast food. He certainly doesn't need the money, even if the folks who made these Batman movies did. Let's look on the bright side. At least Batman didn't whip out a credit card or something. Seven million. Hmm, <laughs> nuts. For Screen Crush, I'm Matt Singer. Thanks for watching, and for even more, make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.